Uh, comrades, good morning. Please be seated. Okay. We will commence proceedings first with a roll call of the SFG collectives that have arrived so far. So I'll hand over to, to Comrade Eunice Yogi to do the roll call. Thank you. Amala! Amala! Viva Socialism Diva! Viva Socialism Diva! Thank you so much, comrades. Good morning, all Procotor has served. And uh, first of all, I want us to applaud ourselves. Something that started in one collective. We now have about 25 collectives and still counting, which is a great tribe that we have chopped. Please, if I mention the name of the collective, honorable stand up and then wave. I can say I'm Pia Minka, University of Skill Training and Entrepreneurial Development. Yes, thank you so much. Accra Collective, Accra Collective. Thank you, thank you. Aqua Pim Collective, Aqua Pim Collective. Thank you so much. Accra Technical University, Accra Technical University. Thank you. Bibiani Collective, Bibiani Collective. Bolga Collective, Bolga Collective. Ghana Institute of Journalism. Thank you, thank you. Whole Collective. Islamic University Collective. Thank you. Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Thank you so much. Kofudua Collective. Kofudua Collective. Thank you. Kumasi Technical University. Thank you so much. That's KSCU, in short. Mkwanta Collective. Mkwanta Collective. Thank you too. Obwasi Collective. Obwasi Collective. Thank you. Takradi Collective. Takradi, thank you so much. Tamale Collective, Tamale. Takwa Collective, Takwa. Thank you. University of Education, UNIBA, UEW, for short. Thank you so much. University of Ghana, University of Ghana. Thank you. Well Collective. Wa Collective. Guniba Collective. Guniba Collective. Thank you so much. Sunyai Collective. Sunyai Collective. Thank you. Gosu Collective. Gosu Collective. Thanks. Kenyasi. Kenyasi Collective. Thank you so much. Pando. Pando Collective. Thank you. Well, I, have. I have just 25. I have just 25. All right. Thank you so much uh, for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Comrade Eunice. We will now do a roll call also of the international delegation that is here. Our comrades have come from outside of Ghana to participate in this event in solidarity with us. So I will invite Comrade Makiza to conduct that roll call. Okay. Viva socialism viva! Viva socialism viva! 
Uh, good morning, comrades. I'm highly honored this morning to introduce and acknowledge the presence of our international partners who have crossed borders to come here today to witness this all-important transitioning of the socialist form of Ghana into a socialist movement of Ghana. So all the way from South Africa this morning, we have the Abbas Lali Bas and John Dolo. Kindly wave, kindly wave. Thank you so much for coming all the way from Burkina Faso. This morning we have here CGTB. Kindly wave, let us see your presence here. Let us feel your presence. All the way from Benin today as well, we have the Communist Party of Benin. Also from Burkina Faso, we have Confederation Générale du Travail du Burkina. We also have Congo Love all the way from Congo this morning. We have Democratic Way from Congo. I beg your pardon, Democratic Way from Morocco this morning. We also have European Secretariat from International. And this morning as well, we have Faso Kuna from Mali. Kindly wave, let us see you. Kindly wave. We also have International People's Assembly, International as well. We have MOJA, that's Moja from International as well. MST, all the way from Brazil this morning. Let us kindly see you waving. Hello to all of you. And NUMSA from South Africa is joining us here this morning for this important Congress. Also this morning, we have PAIGC from Guinea-Bissau. We also have Pan-Africanism today, PAT from International as well. And we have Parti Communiste Revolutionnaire de Côte d'Ivoire as well. All the way from Côte d'Ivoire this morning. We also acknowledge the presence of Party for Socialism and Liberation this morning, all the way from the United States of America. We also have Catriem Voix from Congo this morning joining us right here. And we have all the way from Venezuela, Simon Bolivar Institute for Peace and Solidarity Among People. And joining us all the way from South Africa this morning, we have the Socialist Revolution Workers' Party. Thank you so much for, com for coming, comrades. And also from Tanzania, Tanzania Socialist Forum this morning is here. And from Cuba, we have Tricontinental. And all the way from Zimbabwe, we have United Food and Allied Workers Union. And finally, we acknowledge the presence of Williams College, who is also joining us here this morning. We appreciate all of you for coming to join us right here to make history as a socialist form of Ghana transitions to a socialist movement of Ghana to break the shackles of neoliberalism, colonialism, and imperialism. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much, Comrade Makiza. So, let me just do the protocol properly once, and then we will avoid it for the rest of this meeting. So, um, my name is Chuchu Opoku. I'm the convener of the Socialist Forum of Ghana. Um, I'm up here with Comrade Kwesi Pratt, who is the General Secretary of SFG, with Eunice, who is one of our National Secretariat leaders. Um, you've met her, you've met Makiza already, and Blaise Tulo, who has been a leader in the development of the collectives that have just been introduced to all of you. Okay. So on behalf of the team up here, on behalf of SFG, I would like to welcome, first of all, the representatives of the diplomatic representatives of fraternal countries for showing up here today. I understand it's been a very difficult journey today from Accra. There's a lot of activity going on in this area. So it's, we appreciate that you've made the effort to arrive here. We appreciate also that You've done so in the times that we face, with the pandemic still raging around us. I would also like to welcome again the delegates who have just been introduced 
from the International People's Assembly and from the Pan-Africanism Today project. Um, you've heard all of their names and you'll have opportunities to interact with them as we go along. There are a number of individual honored guests who are here. Um, unfortunately, the sun is my eye, so I can't see you too well, but I can see Comrade Akisoya here. Um, and perhaps as we go along, I'll be able to recognize and acknowledge other people. Sorry. Ah, I hear Comrade Greenstreet is here. Ah, Ivor, there you are. Thank you. Um, from the CPP. Okay, Convention People's Party of Ghana. Okay. I would like to recognize all the other socialist and progressive organizations who have been able to send representatives here today. Again, I can't see, so I can't see. Uh, Comrade Explo, are you here? Ah, Comrade. Okay. Okay. Um, then, um, if they are here, I would like to recognize Nananum from the Ifuchu Traditional Council, the owners of this land upon which we are meeting. Then, I'd like to welcome all our own members, the delegates of the collectives of the Socialist Forum of Ghana, for whom this meeting has been called, and who have made all of this possible. I would particularly like to recognize and thank the members of the brigade. Um, we have a brigade here named after one of our comrades who passed away earlier this year, um, and who in fact is being buried today in his hometown, about 40 minutes drive from here. Ah, okay. Um, so I'll come back to the brigade. So I understand that there's a representative of the Municipal Assembly. Um, if you're here, please identify yourself. That's the Municipal Assembly for this, for this city of Winneba. As I was saying, you see a lot of people walking around in green t-shirts. They are members of the Comrade Raymond Osei Brigade. We named the brigade this year after a fallen comrade, passed away a few months ago, but who was a core leader of SFG, used to teach in the University of Cape Coast, and as I said, is actually being buried today about 40 minutes drive from here. So we honored him by naming the brigade that has actually done the concrete work that is made today happen. Everything from food to accommodation, arranging transport, um, communication, everything has been done by the comrades you see in green t-shirts. So I'd like, uh, if you can, a round of applause acknowledging their work. Okay. So having said that, and Forgive me, I, I've been reminded that we would like at this moment to hold a minute's silence for our fallen comrade. So if you would please be upstanding for a minute. May Comrade Ose rest in peace and in power. Thank you. you so, with those formalities concluded, and with the roll call demonstrating that we do in fact have a substantive quorum, it is my deep, deep honor to humbly declare the Congress of the Socialist Movement of Ghana open. Okay. We are slightly behind time, and um, it's clearly a bit uncomfortable with the sun behaving the way it is. Um, my tasks. Okay. Ah, oh, yes, an announcement. For those who would like to present solidarity messages, 
um, Comrade Eunice is coming around, you can please indicate to her and we'll structure that into this morning's program. Okay. So our tasks this morning are to hear a number of reports. We will hear reports on the development of our collectives from Comrade Bliss. We will hear a report from the Standing Committee to be delivered by um, Comrade Pratt. And then we will have a, another interlude from the Mystica Group. Then we will take solidarity messages, at least we'll take a few of the solidarity messages. Let me also say that for reasons of time constraint, we have arrangements, this is the press room, right? The press room is here, right? Okay. So there's a media room here. So people who wish can go and record their solidarity messages directly on camera here. So we can save time in terms of the number of presentations we hear today. So I'm not going to make a speech, but I will now call on Comrade Blaise Tulo to give us the report on the formation of the collectives. Thank you. Amandla! Amandla! Viva Socialism Viva! I'm here to present a report on the collectives that we have formed over the last one year. The Socialist Forum of Ghana has established 23 collectives across the country and six collectives in the tertiary institutions. The collectives were organized through a thorough community engagement and political education programs referred to as mini schools. These schools took the newly recruited cadres through introduction to socialism, the history of Ghana, internationalism, and the history of SFG as a political organization. The schools were organized for a minimum of 25 to 30 cadres who were taken through the basic tools of grassroots work. A lot of grassroots work has since been carried out by these collectives. The collectives have expanded their numbers and have provided some orientation to new members and are now integrated into their respective collectives. We like to report that the collectives are at different stages of development. And in the last year, SNG collectives have all carried out different political attacks in their various regions and communities. Our collectives have taken active part in the IPS week-long campaign of anti-imperialist struggles through recordings of solidarity messages, engaging in social media activism, and partic participated in a coordinated and organized international Twitter storm that sought to raise awareness on imperialist aggression around the world. Our collectives have been intentional about solidarity events around sanctions on Cuba, Venezuela, and North Korea, especially at a time of the global pandemic. In Ghana, the collectives have self-organized and participated in the famous Ghana's Day of Shame event on the 24th of February, 2020. All collectives issued statements to mark the anniversary of the overthrow of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, which added a lot of intensity in terms of coverage and raising political awareness of that unfortunate event of 1966. Right here in Winneba, a health work was well organized by the Winneba Collective that brought together many young people to walk around some principal streets. That was an impressive and massive act of mobilizing by these young people. Even though it was dubbed a health work, the collective clandestinely politicized the event and used it as a recruiting activity. 
The health work ended with conversation around the crisis of the youth and the need for them to participate in the tedious process of change for the future. The Accra Collective is now active in the unending struggle to protect and preserve the Ada Lagoon from individuals who selfish with selfish and parochial interest. The collective has engaged with the women in struggle against the privatization of Ada Salt and are providing political and legal direction. A recent visit to Takwa and Takwadi shows our relatively young collective have started engagement with some mine workers. They have the political objective of studying these mining communities, talking to the workers, and connecting the struggles of these miners to the political project of SMG. Takwa and Takwa Ali Collective are two very strategic collectives, as they are in areas of extraction dominated by multinational corporations who plunder the resources of this country and are engaged in exploitation of mine workers. Political education has been one important dimension for collectives to take very seriously, both as a mechanism for recruitment, but also to ensure commitment by raising political consciousness of members. The collectives are also mandated to take study very seriously. Collective study forms an important pedagogical dimension of the work of SMG. Hence, all collectives must establish study groups and engage in effective study of theory. So far, the Accra Collective has established a study group that receives effective guidance from the Standing Committee. With the help of Komeda Dongo, the Boga Collective is having a detailed study of class struggle in Africa. These study groups, which are expected to spring around all the collectives, will use the Marxist study manual that has been published by SFG. SMG is to ensure collective discipline has provided a leadership structure for the collectives through a process of democratic centralism. All collectives have successfully elected leaders that play a coordinating role in the collectives. They have a convener, secretary, women's organizer, organizer, treasurer, and youth leader. These portfolios and their corresponding tasks have been clearly outlined in the constitution of SMG. A one-week residential training was organized for all leaders of the collectives who were taken through a rigorous process of how to grow their respective collectives last month. We are pleased to report that our collectives are becoming more vibrant and self-regulating. A recent visit to the collective shows that all the collectives have a meeting time and venue, although some of the venues are temporary. There are records of minutes of meetings being held regularly. A guideline as to how these meetings should be held have been provided. We understand that these collectives will need time, effort, and guidance to grow and develop. We will not push these collectives beyond the time and space they need to develop into vibrant branches of SMG. The collectives themselves reflect the different phases of our organization that is in permanent construction. We understand that we must nurture them through a process that is tedious but enduring, and this is our collective task. We dare not fail because failure can only mean more suffering and misery for the masses of Ghanaian, African, and the world at large. There is victory for us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Comrade Blaise, okay. for your clandestine demonstrations. Okay. Um, I'd like to make another couple of announcements. I understand that His Excellency, the Ambassador of Palestine, is with us today. I'd like to acknowledge him. Okay. 
I also understand that uh, Comrade Ramzi Ibrahim, who is the Palestinian resident in Nigeria, has also joined us. Welcome, Comrade. And a couple of organizations that have not quite been acknowledged yet. The Social Justice Movement Group. The great TUC of Ghana, the Trade Union Congress, is represented here at a senior level. Thank you, comrades. Thank you for coming. And then and our comrades in the Ghana Federation of Labor. Who is here for coming? Okay. Okay, thank you. And then another organization, um, Africa Moving. Um, who is representing Africa Moving? Is this blue? Okay, well, we've already, ah, Explo. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Okay, we will now move on to a report from the Standing Committee of SFG um, to the organization and to our delegates. The report will be delivered by Comrade Kwesi Pratt, General Secretary. Thank you. Comrades and friends, this is a report of the Standing Committee of the Socialist Forum of Ghana. Sometime in 1993, shortly after the return to constitutionalism and after 12 years of military rule, four comrades met in Accra to discuss the state of the socialist organization in Ghana and how best to respond to the challenges that face the working people and ordinary citizens in Ghana. The struggles of the working people, the adoption of the 1992 Fourth Republican Constitution, and paradoxically, the triumph of interventionist neoliberalism globally created a window for the resumption of open socialist political activity in Ghana. There was, of, of course, a limit to the space that the global situation and the return to constitutionalism offered for our cause. The meeting took place at a time when the Rawlings administration, the prized people of the World Bank and the IMF, had rolled out a massive program of retrenchment in public services, devaluation of the national currency by more than 20,000%, reversal of the increased social, uh, socialization of health, education, housing, and other social protection programs. The PNDC had accelerated the privatization of state enterprises, leading to the sale or destruction of more than 300 state enterprises that had been undermined by ideologically driven state neglect, and official corruption over many years. Organized labor was under attack, and many vocal trade unionists had been handed out of the country. Ghana was also emerging out of a debilitating culture of silence under which the right to free speech had been severely muzzled. These circumstances coupled with the organizational weaknesses of a disrupted, battered, and balkanized socialist movement in Ghana, informed our initial modest aspirations. The pioneering comrades decided as a first step to build a Marxist study group to intervene in national policy discourse 
unchallenged and expose the non-liberal ideological positions and to participate in the worldwide anti-imperialist solidarity movement. As expected, the Socialist Forum of Ghana was very quickly drawn into higher and higher levels of activism to support concrete struggles of working and marginalized Ghanaians. Organized groups responded positively to our radical class analysis of their struggles that affirmed their own basic sense of justice. They warmed to a conviction that justice is achievable based on class clarity, class unity, and committed struggles. People came to the SFG seeking support for their campaigns, and we responded. And in responding, we grew. Literally from day one, therefore, the SFG traversed its self-imposed operational vision. We found ourselves at the center of political protest against neoliberal imperialism, fighting on many fronts, not only on the level of ideas, but in the streets, alongside the working people, students, and marginalized groups. Our work outgrew the institutional capacity of the instrument we had designed to deliver it. Despite these limitations, the SFG has managed to make an impact in Ghana over the last 29 years. The SFG has embarked on a number of projects which I would illustrate here. One of our most important projects has been the Freedom Center. We set up the Freedom Center in Accra as our headquarters and a venue for intellectual engagement, cultural manifestations, international solidarity campaigns, and domestic progressive struggle. We have also been very deeply engaged in international solidarity. The Freedom Center now hosts Ghana solidarity campaigns with West Papua, the Saudi Arab Democratic Republic, and Palestine, which are struggling against brutal colonial rule. It also holds satellite campaigns with sovereign countries like Cuba, Venezuela, Iran, Bolivia, and others who are continuously targets of imperialist aggression. In terms of domestic campaigns, the Freedom Center actively hosts campaigns for labor rights, student rights, community resource and democratic rights, citizen and media rights to free expression and association, and gender campaigns. Until the arrival of COVID-19, the COVID-19 pandemic, the center hosted weekly cultural events, including a Monday Groove, which is a freestyle cultural event at which members of the public are encouraged to read poems, sing songs, tell stories, and generally express themselves creatively. These activities also included a weekly film show, which aired and discussed a wide range of films from different perspectives. A 12-piece band, the Freedom Band, based at the Freedom Center, emerged around Monday Groove. And comrades and friends, tonight, you would have the opportunity to boogie to the sounds of the Freedom Band tonight. This band now plays at almost all of our public events. It has even performed to an enthusiastic audience at a concert in Caracas, Venezuela, and has produced the reggae version of the International. We plan to fully commercialize the Freedom Band to raise resources for our work. The Freedom Center offers a reading room which makes Marxist and progressive literature available to our members and interested members of the public. The Marxist study group of the Accra Collective of the SFG is also hosted at the Freedom Center. Another very important project that we have been running is known as the Freedom Bookshop. The SFG established the Freedom Bookshop 
whose objective is to make available to the Ghanaian public progressive books, especially books authored by Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, which have been in scarce supply in the country since the 1966 coup. And perhaps it is important to mention that after the CIA-sponsored coup of 1966, all of Nkrumah's books were burned in bonfires on, surprisingly, university campuses. The bookshop has operated for the last 10 years and is increasingly the go-to place for readers interested in progressive literature. We have also embarked upon a legacy project whose sole objective is to provide all the 13 titles authored by Osadjipo Dr. Kwame Nkrumah to all the tertiary institutions, public libraries, and the libraries of institutions like Parliament, the Armed Forces Training College, the Judiciary, etc. So far, donations of the books have been made to all public universities, regional libraries, Parliament House, Armed Forces Training Center, and the Judicial Service. The SFC is also involved in publishing. And so far, we have published many books and booklets authored by our own cadres. And this is to aid in our educational and other campaigns. These publications have included The Great Deception, How the CIA Overthrew Nkoma. Number two, Fight Back a response to anti nkrumahs provocations. And it's important to mention that in recent times, there has been a severe onslaught on the legacy of Osadifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. And to our surprise, this book, Fight Back, a response to anti nkrumah provocations, has become the major intellectual weapon for socialist and left-wing elements to engage in this struggle. In fact, when this book was announced on Pan-African television, in one day, 120 people came to the television station looking for copies. That's how successful that publication has been. We have also published a manual for the study of Marxism. And we have published a book which is very, very special. We published a book titled Nkrumah for Young Readers. Nkrumah for Young Readers. There's a booklet on ethnicity and a booklet on the oil industry in Ghana. And this is among many of the publications that we have done. In addition to these, the SFD has begun to publish materials developed by other socialist and progressive formations with whom we have relations. To this end, we have published booklets authored by Trial Continental Institute for Social Research, and we are engaging with other organizations in the sub-region, especially the Communist Party of Benin, one of our closest allies in the sub-region, to publish their own material. We have also offered assistance to the National Labor Congress of Nigeria to publish material that they are able to produce. The SFD is currently managing a printing press in Accra, which prints all of our materials and the Insight newspaper. There are plans to fully commercialize this facility. We are also engaged in popular education, and we have set up an institution to promote popular education. Its focus is on providing relevant tools for the Marxist analysis of society to spread the ideals of Pan-Africanism and to facilitate meaningful interactions of progressive activists across Africa and beyond. Over the last three years, the America Cabral School, which has been set up for this purpose, has trained about 500 cadres from all over the world. The SFG has also set up a research center, and this research group will provide data and analysis for our work and the work of other progressive organizations. 
there are plans to fully incorporate the research center, which has already completed four fantastic studies. The last of the studies is completed had to do with foreign military presence in Africa, an excellent piece of work. We have already told the leadership of the TUC of Ghana, the Trade Union Congress of Ghana, that in spite of the fact that they have their own research team, our research team is at their disposal and we are ready to collaborate with them in doing research which will be of relevance to the struggle to improve the living and working conditions of the Ghanaian working people. The SFG is also engaged in media work. We have been very, very active in media work over the last 29 years. Currently, we are providing technical, editorial, and managerial assistance to Militant Publications Limited, which is the publisher of the daily newspaper, The Insight, and to Pan-African Broadcasting Company, which operates Pan-African Television. Indeed, Pan-African Television has grown so fast over the last three years that it is simply unimaginable. Pan African Television currently is broadcasting to 46 African countries. It is reaching Europe and it is reaching South America. Our competition is not local. Our competition are the big boys and girls in the industry. We want to take down the big boys and girls in the industry from across the globe. And we want to establish ourselves as the voice of all people struggling for social justice, deeper democracy, and bread and butter and kinky and fish. That is our objective. Comrades, we are in transition. After 29 years of work and study, and the modest achievements we have described, the Socialist Forum of Ghana is ready now to move to the next phase of struggle, its transformation into the Socialist Movement of Ghana, which we do hope, which we believe, this Congress will formalize. The primary units of the SLG are the collectives, which are being established in cities and towns, as well as in educational institutions. So far, we have established 29 collectives. From a beginning of four members, we have now established 29 collectives in the following places. Accra, Winneba, Ikropong, Kufuridwa, Nkwanta, Hu, Tamele, Bogatanga, Wa, Takwa, Obwasi, Takradi, Bibiani, Cape Coast, the Ghana Institute of Journalism, the Islamic University, the Accra Technical University, the Kumasi Technical University, the University of Education, Winneba Campus, and Kumasi Campus, Gosu, Pando, and Kenyasi. The membership of these collectives ranges from 30 to 200. It is estimated that the total membership of the SFC is now about 3,000. The Standing Committee is pursuing the establishment of more collectives in all the major cities and towns in all the regions of Ghana. Special attention is also being paid to the recruitment of people in the arts industry, artisans, and rural agricultural workers. In this work, we have engaged in collaborations with several groups and so on. And we want to state here and now that we wish to improve our relations with the trade unions to enhance our participation in the struggles of workers for improved living and working conditions. In this connection, we have held very useful consultations with the leadership of the Trades Union Congress of Ghana and the Federation of Labor. 
the General Agriculture Workers Union of the Trade Union Congress has become a key, key ally in this endeavor. The SRD has offered spaces at the America Cabral School for the training of cadres of the trade union movement. The SRD is also actively collaborating with progressive organizations in mobilizing solidarity for countries under imperialist attack and exposing the dangers of the pursuit of the neoliberal agenda in Ghana and in Africa. Key among these progressive organizations are the African Youth Improvement Foundation, based in the Commonwealth Hall of the University of Ghana, and the All African People's Revolutionary Party, Food Sovereignty Ghana, International Socialist Organization, and the Rastafari World Council. We have now established an international relations department headed by one of our most experienced and distinguished comrades. This department handles all issues related to international solidarity and anti-imperialism. The SFG is a member of the Pan-Africanism Today project based in South Africa and is represented at the leadership level by two comrades. It has also joined the International People's Assembly and it is represented at the leadership level by one comrade. The SFD is continuing to force close ties with countries such as the Saudi Arab Democratic Republic, Palestine, Algeria, Cuba, Venezuela, Iran, and West Papua. It has special relations with socialist and revolutionary organizations throughout the world, especially the Socialist Party of Zambia, the Socialist Revolutionary Workers Party of South Africa, the Communist Party of Benin, the Communist Party of La Côte d'Ivoire, the Nigerian Labour Congress, and the Metal Workers Union of South Africa. Comrades and friends, the worsening economic situation in Ghana is a result of the intensified exploitation of the working people by transnational capital and its local elite supporter. Currently, Ghana's government is spending more than 90% of its total revenue plus grants on debt servicing, debt repayment, and public sector emoluments. Last year, the gross domestic product grew at an average of 4.6% in the first quarter, contracted to minus 3.2% in the second quarter, and shrunk to minus 1.1% in the third quarter. This represents an average outturn of 0.2% for the three quarters. The total national debt has now skyrocketed to 291.6 billion Ghana cities, representing 76.1% of the gross domestic product. The country is also experiencing serious disruptions of electricity supply, affecting production at all levels and the productivity of industry. The budget deficit is also growing at an alarming rate. The effect of these is the draconian measures that the Akufu Addo administration has taken with devastating consequences for the working people of Ghana. Since January this year, the price of petroleum products has been increased four times already. The VAT rate has been increased and government has even imposed a sanitation tax and a banking sector reform tax. The people of Ghana continue to suffer elevated levels of unemployment, lack of access to housing, poor infrastructure, worsening health conditions in the face of COVID-19, and significant reductions in industrial output, despite struggling like one district, one factory. On the international front, the Akufuado government has provided national resources 
and the legal framework for the establishment of a U.S. military base in Ghana. Early this year, the U.S. military carried out exercises in Ghana and thereby jeopardized the security situation in our country. Comrades, this is our future. We are confident that this historic first Congress of the Socialist Movement of Ghana will unanimously approve a transition from a forum to a movement, a new face in the struggles of the Ghanaian people to build a new society on the foundations of socialism, a commitment to pan-Africanism and broad anti-imperialism. The Socialist Movement of Ghana is being born here in the historic town of Winnipeg, where Osadjifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah established the Kwame Nkrumah Ideological Institute to become the ideological intellectual center for the battle against underdevelopment, oppression, and exploitation. We vow to continue in the tradition of Osadjifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Patrice Lumumba, George Padmore, Field Marshal Mutumbi, and of course, Karl Marx. We will not rest until this world is fully rid of the tentacles of capitalist exploitation. The working people of the world will be victorious and they will build a new world without a bomb, a world in which hunger is banished an entirely new world of equal people exploiting the resources of the world in a responsible manner to ensure that all the peoples of the world can realize their full human potential. That new world in which no child will go to bed on an empty stomach. Today, on the eve of that transition, we pledge to continue the battle at the peril of our lives. We are prepared to continue that battle until final victory is achieved. Viva the socialist movement of Ghana. Viva. Viva socialism, viva. Viva international solidarity. I rose, I rose, I rose. Be honest and don't be silly, silly, silly. We are the famous socialists. We fear no fool. I rose, I rose, I rose.
Request that the comrades from Simon, Simon Bonifacio Institute make themselves available. Uh, comrades, before I read the message from the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Cuba, I'd like to announce that at exactly 11 o'clock, we shall be receiving a message from Ramallah, Palestine, occupied Palestine. That message will be transmitted by Zoom to this conference, and I would like to call on our technical people to start working to get that message from Ramallah to us. Message from Ramallah at exactly 11 o'clock. This message is from the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Cuba. And it reads, Dear comrades, on the occasion of the celebration of the founding Congress of the Socialist Movement of Ghana, we send fraternal greetings to all participants in this important event. At the same time, that we convey our gratitude for the solidarity and friendship towards the Cuban Revolution, especially in the fair fight against the criminal, economic, and commercial and financial blockade imposed by the United States of America for more than six decades, which constitutes the main obstacle to the development of our country. Humanity faces a complex scenario derived from the worldwide application of neoliberal policies aggravated by the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. In this context, while mongering tendencies sponsored by imperialism take hold, the united struggle 
of political parties that embrace the conviction that a better world is possible and necessary is necessary as bequeathed to us by our leaders, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and Commander-in-Chief Fidel Castro. The Cuban party and people ratify the determination to defeat the campaigns orchestrated and financed by the United States government aimed at reversing the Cuban revolutionary process in which they will fail. We wish you success in this founding Congress and in meeting the goals you set for the future. Released by the International Relations Department of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Cuba. We will now take a message from the Simon Bolivar Institute of Venezuela. Thank you. Morning, everybody. We bring greetings on behalf of the Simon Bolivar Institute for Peace and Solidarity Among People and of the Revolutionary People of Venezuela. We are proud to share a common origin, a common struggle against colonialism and imperialism, and a common hope in the construction of a more just society. We both know that a new world is necessary but we together can make it possible as well. We congratulate the Socialist Forum of Ghana, from now the Socialist Movement of Ghana, on this important occasion, and we wish much success on this first Congress. As Commander Chavez said, only the people can save the people. Long live socialism. Long live the African and Latin American people united forever. Viva. Thank you very much, comrade. I would now like to invite Moving Africa to give the next message. And we request that Moja also comes up and takes a seat on the stage while we're waiting. Thank you. Amanda! Amanda! Viva socialism! I'm Esplor Nani Kofi, and I speak on behalf of Moving Africa. Or, originally, I was going to be invited to represent Kilombo Project, and I pointed out that we had expanded beyond that. Kilombo project was a project to address the issue of democratic deficit, considering that bourgeois democracy is a sham. We initiated street parliaments and grassroots incremental memorial lectures uh, to raise the consciousness of people that another world is possible and networking is strength. Through that, we organize even international conferences to share our experiences at the grassroots with other organizations. We have been working with the Socialist Forum of Ghana since its birth, and we would want to salute the Socialist Forum of Ghana for being the most consistent in raising the banner of socialism in this country since the Fourth Republic. This consistency has been an encouragement, not only in swelling its numbers, but also in proving to people that it is worth committing your life to the cause of socialism. And they introduced the Black Star of Excellence Award, which introduced others who have been involved in struggle so that it can inspire the youth I'm very proud to be here together with my comrade Awadi, comrade Akila Kwasoya. And I'm the youngest person, though I'm gray, 
I'm the youngest person to have benefited from the Black Star of Excellence Award. And this inspires me that through the Socialist Forum of Ghana, a lot is possible. And today, that we are transforming it into the Socialist Movement of Ghana, which implies that it's possible that people who are here today as fraternal delegates may become part of that movement in due course and champion the cause for an alternative from this sham of bourgeois democracy. I finally salute you people. Very proud to see all these young people here and the other generation of Hajia and all those who are here today. Viva socialism. Another world is possible. Victory is certain. Thank you, comrade. Thank you very, very much. Um, okay. Yes, we now have the message from the Movement for Justice in Africa from Liberia. Comrade. And I'm um, sorry, can the Socialist Revolutionary Workers Party join us on the stage? You're next. And after that, AAPRP. Viva Sodazin Viva. This is a message from the Movement for Justice in Africa, Liberia chapter. On behalf of the Movement for Justice in Africa, Moja, I bring you this solidarity message from the leaders and general collective of the movement during this transitional event of Social Forum of Ghana. Although the organization has been in existence for the past 29 years, those leading the crusade are not strangers to the political struggle on the African continent. Comrades, Moja salutes you on this occasion as this historical occasion has pointed to the fact that Africa must unite to be free from neocolonialism, to have Africa work for Africa, through value addition of African human, natural, and other resources, rather than through the value depression, where there is production of what Africans do not consume and the consumption of what Africans do not produce. Although Africa has overcome colonial rule, somehow vast majorities of Africans remain poor, while the state managers and their transitional partners remain rich. Therefore, as pan african we must not get tired of the struggle for justice. The work of Dr. Osajifu Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana, Judah Narevi of Tanzania, Kenny Kaunda of Zambia, and others African strugglers informed the formation of Moja in 1973. Comrades, the struggle continues. Socialist Revolutionary Workers Party. That's why I am a communist. That's why I am a communist. That's why. Amanda, away to, away to, power to the working class, power, power, Amanda, away to, uh, thanks, uh, uh, program director, uh, safe to say all protocol observed, but quite important that we express our sincere gratitude for the invite and for being part and parcel of this revolutionary gatherings. And on behalf of the SRWP's national leadership, its central committee, uh, allow me to pass revolutionary greetings to all the delegates present and participants of this important Congress. We are here but more to pledge both in speech and deeds our revolutionary support and our solidarity message now and beyond this particular Congress. That this indeed is a historic event in all respect and we are indeed marching in a compact group through and through towards socialism. We want to use you a very smooth and revolutionary transition into a socialist movement of Ghana we want to 
continue to pledge and indicate the revolutionary and ongoing support from the SRWP in South Africa and South Africa, uh, working class at large. And we do so by saying we wish that this transition indeed represent a true and a real change to the working class at large here and abroad. Free Palestine. Free Palestine. We defend the Cuban Revolution, defend the Bolivian Revolution, advance and deepen the Haitian Revolution. We are saying to the SP in Zambia that is on its election, we wish all the best through this coming round of election and their contestation in the southern part of Africa. For what? With socialism, for what? Down with capitalism, down. Down with imperialism, down. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Um, why are you there? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. So will you announce it? Comrades, it's now time to receive a special message on behalf of the people of Palestine struggling against Israeli apartheid occupation. And the message is coming from the city of Ramallah. Please, with a round of applause, let's welcome our comrades from Palestine with their message, a message of love and a message for the liberation of their homeland. Dear comrades, it is my honor and my pleasure to bring to this first National Congress of the Socialist Movement of Ghana the heartfelt greeting of Fatah International Relations Commission, notably the heartfelt greetings of Mr. Rauhi Fatouh Abu Wissam. Yes. Yes. You can hear me. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to be satisfied with an audience of one. One, two, three, four, five. Are you ready? Are you ready? In the occupied city of Ramallah, Palestinian territory.
apologies, comrades. Yes. We're experiencing some technical difficulties. So I would like to invite AAPRP up to deliver their message while our technical team tries to resolve the sound challenge. You so see me and you can hear me. Afute. You see me and you can hear me. You see me and you can hear me. Can you hear me? Viva socialism. All right, I bring you greetings from the All-African People's Revolutionary Party. Um, I'm, I'm on standby. I want to share briefly with you this two-line song and uh, we'll continue from I'm there. In Africa today, I'm on standby. we don't want no more sentiment. We don't want no more promises. All we need is action. Oh, my people, let's move now. I particularly like um, the action part of this song which has remained with me from the day I've heard this song. Um, because the promises by political leadership on the African continent has failed. They've mostly been used as a um, mass deceit into political office. The alternative now lies with the revolutionary action. So what is revolutionary action? It's our collective, productive, and our commitment to bring down the forces of imperialism and um, exploitation. Comrades, the APRP being a revolutionary Pan-African, a mass-based social organization, just as the Socialist Forum of Ghana is here to affirm its support, commitment to the onward struggle to achieve Pan-Africanism, African unity, that's, which is towards a larger human liberty and freedom. Choboy, we say, and IMF and World Bank programs, which, are, which is not in the interest of the African people. Comrades, capitalism is one. Africa must be one in fighting it. The world revolution has to be one. Forward then to Pan-Africanism and African unity and a socialism. Long live the Socialist Forum longer live the people's organization, forward to the triumph of the international socialist revolution, good will overcome evil. Aluta continua. Thank you. Thank you, comrade. I would like to invite the representative of the social justice movement, Ghana. SJM, are you here? Okay. Who will be followed by the Trades Union Congress of Ghana? The, the stack is this way. Thank you very much. Solidarity message from Social Justice Movement Ghana to Socialist Movement Ghana. I bring you fraternal greetings from the Social Justice Movement Ghana. The Social Justice Movement Ghana takes this opportunity to congratulate you for making the transition from a forum to a movement. We commend you for making the transition and we wish you all the best as you continue to grow and join other forces to make Ghana and Africa a better place for all, especially the youth and those yet unborn. We are a social justice movement that seeks to bring about economic and social justice for all Ghanaians. As a movement, we stand for a fair, just society that meets the aspiration of the people and sharing public utilities such as water, electricity, are delivered by the state efficiently and effectively for our common good. Providing accessible free health care for all ailments. Delivering free quality education from preschool to university and among other things. As a result, we have the view that 
Our democratic governance is under attack currently with the obvious signs of a state capture by the ruling elite, laden with unfettered culture of silence. The nation state of Ghana keeps deteriorating since 20, 26th February 1966, when the constitutionally elected government okay, of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah okay, was Fattah. overthrown. Today, Stop. we see the worst form of that deteriorating yeah, in all aspects of government and the deplorable state of the working class. The worrisome conditions of our able-minded and able-bodied youth who are either underemployed or unemployed, whilst the few ruling class keeps increasing their already huge salaries with juicy pegs and labored attempt of paying their spouses On that score, there is no time like now for SGMG calling on all the progressive forces and other well-meaning Ghanaians to mass mobilize in order to crack open the stranglehold of the two unperforming dominant parties, i.e. NPP and NDC. In that way, a better and dignified social, political, and economic society can be built for all Ghanaians. We thank the Socialist Forum of Ghana for organizing this timely and important event here in Winneba. And we welcome you all present here. Power to Social Justice Movement Ghana, strength to Socialist Movement of Ghana. Long live socialism. Thank you very much, comrade. Hello. I'm on Zoom with Canada. Uh, okay, uh, one quick, uh, quick question. The and we have a double okay. team from organized labor. Uh, Welcome, the Malaysian Hedi will want to say, you know, uh, presented by Fatah International Relations to Mrs. To uh, to we say uh, dedicated to to we say from Fatah to Mr. You are lucky they have a technical problem. First of all, on behalf of the Ghana and of can you repeat the context? We would like to thank the conveners of this very important Congress. I am here with my colleagues, the General Secretary of General Agriculture Workers Union, Brother Edward Karwe. Presented by I'm also here oh, with the top person of the National Women's Council of TUC, Sister Rebecca Kwashi, the top person of the National Youth Council of TUC, uh -huh. our brother. I can't answer now, I'm online. I'm, I'm on the air, but in Sister an hour, Kimi. Ayele Adefio, our PRO. Comrades, trade union ideology and socialist ideology are one and the same. The principles, the values are all the same. And these are unity, solidarity, social justice, collectivism. The default system of human society is socialism. What has happened is this. Capitalism has come to truncate the natural development of human beings and human societies. What capitalism has succeeded to do is to capitalize on the dark side of humanity. Individualism, selfishness, lack of sympathy, and lack of empathy for the underprivileged in society. That is why we see corruption everywhere because capitalism is the root of corruption. The Mr. Zori, the problem is not yet solved at the Ghana end. And that is why De this, conference, to Jessica, this Congress is very important. And to have our seniors, so, like dedicated our senior to Jessica Pasoya, in does. appreciation me, very and, uh, and very significant. And I salute uh, this great son of Ghana, 
because of the campaign against bad in, in depreciation that and something our governments else. have used to uh, exploit but, uh, this country. And that is why we need to dedicate it to Jessica, whatever, we all here have in appreciation to ensure of her, that the ideals of, of her person and, and her work of capitalism and so, of socialism Nations Committee. and the principles that guide socialism okay. get to everywhere in to this world, especially to our young people. We at the TUC are happy Hello? to be part of this transformation from a socialist forum to a socialist movement. And we, we pledge Hello? our support for this movement. Viva socialism! Choboy! Thank you, comrades, or brothers. Um, I invite now the representative of the Benin Communist Party. And following him, the Revolutionary Communist Party of La Côte d'Ivoire. Comrades, I am very sorry to speak, to address my message in colonial language, French or English. After political revolution, we must do linguistic revolution in Africa. Africa is the only continent where we study in foreign language. We administrate our country in foreign language. That is not same thing in other in other continent of the world. So I would like to do something in our national language. For those Ghanaians who understand every language, I would like to say, Miawe Zolo, Miawe Zolo, Akpena Mikaka, okay. And the same thing, in our country, you have a motto. We said, Oh, Chobwe! 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 Well, so I will uh, give my message briefly in French and, be, and after in English. My bad English will excuse me. Bienvenue aux délégués au Congrès. Je veux remercier ici les organisateurs de ce grand congrès et sa trans la transformation du forum socialiste en mouvement socialiste. C'est un grand progrès. Il est important de savoir que pour arriver au socialisme, il faut conquérir le pouvoir. Et pour conquérir le pouvoir, absolument, il faut bien sûr un parti politique. C'est avec joie que je participe à la, disons, à la transformation du forum socialiste en mouvement socialiste. Et je dis encore une fois, congratulations to organizer. Les relations entre le Forum Socialiste du Ghana et le Parti communiste du Bénin sont étroites. Et je remercie ici mon camarade Kouessi Pratt pour avoir entretenu ces relations depuis trois ans, au moins. 
Et c'est à ce titre que, une fois encore, merci. Je suis, nous sommes arrivés au parti, enfin, au communisme, après avoir été un communiste depuis l'enfance. C'est à cause de mon oncle. Bref, je ne serai pas long. C'est pour vous dire ceci. Le socialisme, c'est l'avenir de l'humanité. Et je dis ici, tous les peuples du monde doivent œuvrer à ce que le socialisme triomphe partout dans le monde pour mettre fin aux atrocités du capitalisme et du néolibéralisme. Vive le socialisme Comrade, welcome all delegates et à présent à ce congrès. Je vais first congratulate our comrades who organized this congress, this important congress, especially my comrade Kwesi Pratt. We, uh, we, I come from Benin Republic, a French colonized country. As you know, at this time, this moment, in West Africa, the worst enemy of West Africa, known as imperialism, is French. He is French because he don't, uh, this power doesn't want that we be united in West Africa. They don't want that we have a common currency. Uh, everywhere in Israel and so forth and so on, they are doing war, war against people in Israel. That is why I tell you, we must unite your, our forces to win against imperialism in general, and especially French imperialism in West Africa. My party has now is 43 years old, Party Communiste du Bénin. 43 years. Founded in 1977. We have known many difficulties, but today we are, we stand, so I'm called debout. We have control on the main trade union congress of Benin, CSTB. The main, uh, if you want, uh, uh, trade uh, union of students of Benin. The main organization of women of Benin. And we are now. And the main organization of peasants now in Benin. We are fighting every day to win, to, uh, what not, to conquest the power in Benin to overturn capitalism power in Benin, represented by Patti Stallone. He in power uh, since uh, 2016. We are every day, we make our effort to, to, to heighten conscience, conscience of people in, all, in many sectors, industrial, uh, 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 civil servants, youths, women, etc., etc. We appreciate the relation before, uh, between Social Forum of Ghana and Party Communist du Bénin. It is the path, the road to socialism in Africa. Uh, I will tell you that in this road, 
we will, we will win. We will win, have victory, victory in Africa, in other, in, in, in Africa and the world. So, I will tell you that socialism is the future of humanity. Viva el socialismo! Viva el socialismo! Viva el comunismo! Thank you. Thank you, comrade. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Okay, yes. Okay. Our comrades from La Côte d'Ivoire. They can't hear. Our apologies. Revolutionary Communist Party of La Côte d'Ivoire. Thank you. Mais, comme l'a dit tout à l'heure le représentant du Parti communiste du Bénin, je vais être obligé de m'adresser à vous dans la langue du colon en Côte d'Ivoire, le français. Au directoire du Forum socialiste du Ghana, au directoire des partis et organisations ici présents, Mesdames et Messieurs, en vos rangs, grade et qualité, le Parti communiste révolutionnaire de Côte d'Ivoire, PCRCI, par ma voix, vous salue. Nous sommes heureux d'être invités au Congrès constitutif du Forum socialiste du Ghana, un parti prolétarien qui vient s'ajouter aux différents partis dans le monde qui luttent sous la bannière du marxisme-léninisme. Nous sommes d'autant plus heureux que le Ghana est un pays voisin, très voisin, je dirais, de la Côte d'Ivoire. En effet, tous les jours, les habitants du Ghana et de Côte d'Ivoire traversent la frontière comme pour dire « nous ne nous sentons pas concernés par ce machin-là ». Mais les combattants prolétariens de nos pays que nous sommes ne sont pas encore arrivés à banaliser cette frontière comme le font les commerçants, les commerçantes, les ouvriers, les ouvrières, les paysans, les paysannes. Cette frontière érigée par les colons est encore étanche entre nous. Cela n'est pas normal. Il appartient à présent de la, de la briser et nous en avons les moyens. Nous allons assurément apprendre beaucoup de vous, des luttes de vos peuples au cours de ce congrès. Nous restons tout oui. Mesdames et messieurs, permettez que je dise quelques mots de mon pays. En Côte d'Ivoire, nous sommes confrontés à la dictature implacable des vallées du capital financier international, des plus intrépides et des plus engagés dans la défense des intérêts de leurs maîtres. Le dernier en liste de ces vallées est Alassane Ouattara, bien connu ici au Ghana. La Côte d'Ivoire est une néocolonie dominée au plan économique, politique et culturel par l'impérialisme international avec une suprématie de l'impérialisme français. Au plan économique, nous sommes dans une économie capitaliste arriérée, reposant essentiellement sur la production et l'exportation des matières premières agricoles et minières. La misère règne au sein des classes populaires, malgré un taux de croissance moyen de 7% ces huit dernières années, selon les statistiques du pouvoir. Assurément, nous pouvons dire que nous sommes dans une croissance appauvrissante. Au plan politique, les pouvoirs successifs, support de l'impérialisme, sont de nature autocratique et virent au despotisme dans les périodes de crise aiguë, comme en 63, en 90, en 95, en 2000, en 2010, en 2020. Les classes populaires ouvrières et paysannes et autres travailleurs, les couches sociales opprimées par la domination impérialiste et l'autocratie, se sont toujours dressées par des luttes multiformes contre effectivement cette domination. En 1990, ce peuple a mis fin à 30 ans de règne du parti unique du PDCI RDA. Il a conquis le multipartisme et la liberté d'association. Mais, hélas, 
l'autocratie a conservé tous ses piliers, toute sa force. Les chefs de l'exécutif continuent de se comporter comme des petits rois. L'impérialisme a maintenu ses liens de dépendance sous toutes ses formes. Mais, malgré les répressions, les difficultés, ce peuple continue sa lutte pour conquérir la liberté, la démocratie, le bien-être social, la souveraineté nationale, la modernité, c'est-à-dire la fin totale du système néocolonial. Il se bat pour son émancipation réelle. La dernière lutte populaire sous Alassane Ouattara, qui ont abouti à une insurrection ratée du fait de la trahison des partis bourgeois d'opposition, mais aussi, il faut le dire, la faiblesse de la démocratie révolutionnaire, est une bonne expérience pour préparer les luttes futures. Le PCRCI en a tiré les leçons pour aider à orienter le combat afin d'assurer la victoire au peuple contre l'impérialisme et ses suppôts locaux. Camarades du Forum Socialiste du Ghana, nous aurons l'occasion de faire connaître davantage les luttes de nos deux peuples par des relations bilatérales que nous allons établir, que nous allons établir dès maintenant. Pour aujourd'hui, pour ne pas abuser du temps de ce congrès, je tiens à la disposition de tous ceux qui le désirent un document résumé des luttes du peuple de Côte d'Ivoire depuis 1911, depuis 2011 plutôt, depuis 2011, date d'arrivée au pouvoir d'Alassane Ouattara. Nous souhaitons plein succès au congrès constitutif du Forum social du Ghana. Vive la lutte du prolétariat du Ghana. Vive l'internationalisme prolétarien. Je vous remercie. We will now take the message direct from Ramallah.
There's one more. Okay, I would like to invite our comrade from the Socialist Popular Alliance Party of Egypt to say a few words. And then we will hear from Mr. Ivor Greenstreet. We'll take the mic to there. Dear comrades and friends, my name is Mamdou Habashi. I'm from Egypt, and I'm a member of the uh, Socialist Popular Alliance, People's Alliance in uh, the party, the most radical opposition party in Egypt today. And I'm a board member of the Arab and African Research Center and the Vice President of the World Forum for Alternatives, which uh, President was Samir Amin. And I have to confess, I reached your country, your very nice country yesterday, and had the chance to talk to uh, some comrades from the young people, and I was astonished. How comes that they did not know who is Samir Amin? Samir Amin was uh, the president of the World Forum for Alternatives and also of the Arab and African Research Center in Cairo. And he is much, much more than a simple Egyptian. And I was uh, wondering how comes that a huge movement born like yours and uh, nobody spoke a word about what Samir Amin has done for Africa. This is one note. The other one I would like to share with you is that many of these comrades of the collectives, they don't know the recent history of the relations between Egypt and Ghana. The special relation, what was the role of Egypt as one of the first countries that got its independence, political independence after World War II, after China? What did Egypt done to support the liberation movements of entire Africa, and especially Ghana, and especially because of this very tight friendship and personal relation between the two men, Kwame Nkrumah and Nasser. Very few knew that. I've been, whom I talked to yesterday, even they did not know that the wife of Nkrumah was Egyptian and uh, that Egypt supported all these liberation movements and built this very important bridge between North African countries and the African countries sub-Sahara. So now what we observe is that this bridge is broken. The bridge between Africa is broken and time and changing. I did not want to bother you with the situation in Egypt and tell you about uh, the political landscape in Egypt, and uh, it is almost the same like in Ghana and many other countries, but even uh, worse. It is a military dictatorship, a brutal military dictatorship who's now given up the entire independence of Egypt and now are playing on the other side. So this is in a style of a telegram about the situation. But what we have to do now is to follow what Samir Amin legacy said. And those of you who still don't know who is Samir Amin, they have to search about it and learn about it. Samir Amin has started a huge project some decades ago, and it was 
it was uh, it has reached a high level of uh, uh, achievement with uh, El Comandante Hugo Chavez until he was died uh, at that time. The, the project was a little bit uh, some behind. But now, those who called themselves the school of Samir Amin, after his death, they have to continue. We don't have much of a choice. And if you read what he has written in this concern, you will, will, will want to join this movement. We are now about to construct the new international. It's not only about Africa, but Africa is the base of this new movement. And uh, we have reached quite a lot, especially after the death of Samir Amin, and I, I invite all of you who are interested, not only the host party, which I thank from the heart, no, but all other parties and organizations that are here or even not here, they have to contact me to join this movement. We are less, much less organized than our enemy, than our enemy. We have to bundle our efforts. It is no chance to win this historical battle without bundling all our effort. And it is a real good lesson to know. Here we are experiencing the transition from a forum to a movement. That means from a forum to a real effective organization. And that is exactly the lesson of Samir Amin. This international solidarity should not stop at the level of forum and just verbal solidarity. We are here about to construct a new organization which is called the Fifth International. And it's not done by just uh, some speaks or talks. No, it is a very long way, but we have to start it, and we have already started. Thank you very much, comrades. Thank you very much, comrade. Yes, there's a comma. Because of the sun. All right. Comrades, good afternoon. It is a pleasure and honor to be here before you today, although somewhat without notice. Uh, I know that uh, the national chairperson and leader of the Convention People's Party would have been here if she was available, Nanahima Sapong Kumankuma. Either her or the General Secretary, Nanaya Jantra, would have been here to say a few words of fraternal greetings to the great accomplishment and the beginning of a journey that you're all embarking upon today. But I'm always so happy to be in the presence of uh, the gentleman who one or two people have mentioned already. That is uh, Professor Akilak Pasoya. And I'd wish you'd give him another round of applause again. And, and the reason I say that is that today they are transforming from a, a forum to a movement. But I know, uh, I, I didn't know then because I was only a child, maybe about four or five years ago, because about 50 years ago, Professor Akila Pasoya, uh, I think uh, at, the, at the law faculty department of the University of Ghana, but one of the things he was doing, it was that he was in charge of what was called then the Socialist Society of Ghana. And they had aims and terms and conditions about how to utilize and apply scientific socialism to the problems of Ghana, the problems of underdevelopment in Ghana, developing countries, and worldwide. And even at that time, 
He was a great participant and organizer in the struggle against apartheid. He has been a real servant to the cause of the fight against injustice, neocolonialism, and the kind of fight that we're still engaged in today, which is why we are very happy to be in support of the aims of the socialist movement of Ghana and their transformation from a forum to a movement. The comments made by my brother from Egypt are very important because we have to bundle our efforts. And I know the Convention People's Party believes in so many of the tenets and principles that the Socialist Forum has been fighting for all these years. We therefore wish them all the best as this movement is formed and begins its hard work. Because as he rightly said, the enemy is greater. We wish them well. And to annoy my brother, um, Chrissy Pratt, on a day like this, and because I know the beauty of all, all socialists together um, is that we're not necessarily all dogmatic. We all have our different uh, viewpoints. And so uh, I want to say, God bless the socialist movement of Ghana. Amen. We will take our very last message from the Party for Socialism and Liberation, Comrade Union. Well, comrades, first and foremost, I want to bring you greetings and congratulations from the Central Committee and all of our members of the Party for Socialism and Liberation in the United States. We are humbled and we are honored to be here alongside of you, and we thank you for making the preparations that allowed us to be here. And we also offer our solidarity to all of the parties, movements, and organizations that have gathered to support you in your first National Congress. It warmed our heart to have the opportunity to come here because this is an important step forward, not just for the socialist movement in Africa, but for the socialist movement around the world and for the struggle against imperialism. We know that in the United States, the military forces, the imperialists are increasing their attempts to colonize and to recolonize and to neocolonialize the African continent, not by accident, but because of Congresses like this. These Congresses are the nightmares of the imperialists in the United States of America because they know the people of Africa, especially the young people, will no longer put up with exploitation, with oppression, with neocolonialism, and are rising up from north to south to east to west. This is the nightmare of imperialism. And standing shoulder to shoulder, comrades, we will make the nightmares of imperialism come true. We will crush capitalism in Africa, in the United States, in Europe and in Asia, and we will build a socialist world. We stand with you 100%, shoulder to shoulder. Never hesitate to call on us in the Party for Socialism and Liberation when you need solidarity from the United States. We will be there for you. We will be there with you. We look forward to the proceedings of this Congress. We wish you congratulations, and we stand in solidarity. Thank you. Workers of the World Unite. Thank you, Comrade. Now, that's what you call a solidarity statement. Okay, we now have another performance. Oh. 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 They took away our dancers, but they could not take away our dances. They took away our singers, but they could not take away our songs. 
they took away our ancestors, but they could not take away our ancestry. I have journeyed beyond the boundaries of times and journeyed beyond the times of memory across the breast and craze of the greatest Nile and through the memories of ancient lands of pride. I have dined and wined with great emissaries and revolutionaries, dined with Sankara, Aloy Cabral, Nkrumah, Nina Sison, and now I am here, here with the words of their tongue, tongues embedded in my tongue. So I pray, I go. I go, Africa, I go. I go, socialists of the world united, I go. Can you not hear the voices of the ancient warriors of boundless times? Can't you hear the roars from the drift of the valleys? And can't you not hear the whistles of the storms brewing at the kibbles of Kilimanjaro? I go, Africa, I go. I go, socialists of the world, I go. Hear the voices of Sankara, Nkuma, Modiba Keita, Winnie Makizela, Abu Gazela, Tantara. Viva socialism, viva! Viva socialism, viva! I go, hear yeah, what the divinity say, hear yeah, the voices of destiny. Behold, socialism shall be the center of global existence. Behold, she shall be the fountain on the mountain to water the earth of the deserts. Behold, she shall be the mother whose nipples shall feed the hungry leaves. Viva socialism, viva. Behold, seek you your space and pace and be part of the establishment of the dream. They took away our dances, but they could not take away our dances. They took away the keepers of our land, but they could not take away our land. They took away our ancestors, but they could not take away our ancestry. 
Stop, stop, stop. 
Thank you. Another round of applause for them. We have one last solidarity message from the Communist Party of Kenya. Thank you. Revolutionary greetings, comrade. Uh, today is a special day, special in the sense that I stand here today to echo the voices of victory towards victory that are resounding in Africa. This is one mile of victory in pursuit of a larger victory that is ultimate liberation and African revolution. I stand to convey our heartfelt congratulatory message on behalf of the Communist Party of Kenya to the Socialist Movement of Ghana. This is an epic and monumental uh, this is an epic and monumental milestone. We applaud you for fulfilling the modest ambition of introducing progressive and scientific thinking into the Ghana's population by formalizing the socialist uh, transition. I would also like to extend our revolutionary greetings and permanent solidarity to the socialist movement of Ghana. We urge you to increase the impasses around more structured mobilization, organization, rise of political consciousness, advocacy and lobbying all geared towards empowering oppressed people of Africa and of the world. Um, we recognize the importance of another level of organizing. Uh, the socialist movement of Ghana can eventually uh, become a political party of the new type which is that of the proletarian. So the revolution is uninterrupted and we should forge ahead and work together to ensure that we emancipate the people of Africa and the world. Viva to the socialist movement, viva. Thank you. They've taken the pictures already. Um, thank you very much, comrade. Let me announce that the Communist Party of Kenya has also brought us a parcel of their branding paraphernalia. So that will be on display here in the Secretariat and then henceforth in our reading room at the Freedom Center. We, thank you. We have actually come to the end of this morning's proceedings. Remarkably, we've been able to manage the process within the time originally allotted. We thought that was going to be a major challenge. And we thank you all for, for that. We apologize for making you all sit in the sun, in the heat so long, but we know you'll appreciate that given the pandemic conditions, an indoor event was simply not possible. And the only way we could go ahead with this safely was to do what we've done, okay? Um, everybody's life here is important to us, and we want to make sure that we all leave here the way we came, okay? So, by way of closing remarks, I, I just wanted to say how grateful we are that so many of you 
turned up in solidarity with our struggles here. Whether you came from Accra, Winneba, or came from the United States, we deeply appreciate your solidarity. It is precisely that solidarity, that knowledge that there are others walking alongside you on this path that keeps us going. Okay. So in a, very, in a very real sense, it is precisely because people and organizations such as yourselves have showed up that we know that we are on the right path. We're getting somewhere. We are proud of the achievements we've made over the last 29 years, but we have no illusions about just what those achievements represent. <clears throat> And we have no illusions about the challenges that lie ahead of us. In a sense, having gone public in this way, there's new focus, there's new attention that will be paid to our activities. There'll be more, there'll be a greater level of obstruction. We know that. And we don't need to tell people like yourselves, many of you coming from organizations that have seen true repression, repression in its deepest and most vicious sense. Okay, so we have no illusions. We know that we are very much at the beginning of a new engagement with the working class, starting with organized labor who have graced this occasion. We are completely aware that our work in gender, our work with the feminist movement, even the position of women within our own ranks, within SMG, requires a great deal of attention. Okay? So we are very much at the end of one cycle by the beginning of a much bigger cycle, which will take so much more work from all of us. But we are committed to facing these challenges and to moving forward, and to doing so in solidarity with all of you. Okay? So it's a small step for mankind, but today was a big step for all of us in the socialist movement. And once again, we'd like to thank you all for showing up and being such a lovely um, audience. I have a couple of announcements to make. From here, we will be going into lunch. Our foreign delegates and our specifically invited delegates will, you'll have your lunch upstairs of the Secretariat. The Secretariat is the next building after you, so lunch will be served upstairs there. The SMG members will have lunch in the usual place, the dining hall, downstairs, upstairs, etc. Um, we will entreat you not to crowd the tables for the same reason. Let's try and observe the social distancing protocols so that we don't have probably more than four people at the table. After lunch, we will see the invited guests who are going back to Accra off, and then we will begin the hard work of this Congress. We will break into five commissions, Constitutional Commission, International Affairs, National Affairs, gender affairs and youth affairs to deliberate on SMG's posture on all of these issues. That's a process that will continue for the rest of the day and perhaps even a bit into tomorrow. As you are aware, there's a parallel international program taking place here. So while SMG members are in the commissions, the international group will be meeting um, across the road, this structure here is where this upstairs in this building is where those meetings will take place. In the evening, we will have a performance by the Freedom Band here after dinner. We'll have a performance by the Freedom Band here, to which, of course, you're all invited. You can, you can have some fun. It's part of the program. And then we would hope that everything will wrap up for today by 11. Tomorrow morning, we will have a plenary in the main room upstairs there where we will receive reports from the commissions. 
from the five commissions. And then we will also work on a Congress resolution and make some decisions about structure and leadership until the next Congress. Okay. The international um, delegates, the international team, will continue their meetings in this building. But I think tomorrow you have two separate meetings. So we will allocate another room for that. There's plenty of space, so there's no problem there. Um, and then in the afternoon, we will do the closing ceremony, final report, final resolutions and communique, and declare the meeting over. That, of course, doesn't end the full program, because on the next day, Monday, there will be a meeting of the leadership of Pan-Africanism today. I'm not sure where we're holding it, but we'll have that meeting. It'll probably be most of the day. And there will also be an SMG Central Committee meeting. I think that's tomorrow night, okay, at the same place we held it there. So that's the program we have lined up for the next couple of days. Um, I think that's if, aha, yes, I think I've made all the announcements required. I only then have once again to thank you all so much for showing up today and for being with us through this opening ceremony. The road ahead is long and we will look forward to working with all of you in building this project. This is a project for all of us, as our comrade from Egypt said. This is a project for all of us, not just for Ghana, not just for any particular country, but for humanity. I thank you all once again and declare the opening ceremony closed. Thank you.